Aldrick Rosas, the Giants kicker, ready to go. And here we go from MetLife Stadium. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll be brought down here as the penalty flags come in right away. And we may have a face mask here right at the start. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. On the counter, Elliott. The game's first play produces six yards. Brings up second down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. The last run got six. Now second and four. Prescott, a quick throw caught by Cooper. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Looking to throw, Prescott. And that is incomplete. Not the opening possession they were looking for, especially on the road. No doubt about it, because they wanted to come out and establish a little momentum right away. But now bringing up a fourth down, an empty possession, not what they were seeking. So the Cowboys will punt it on fourth down as on as the veteran Chris Jones to kick it away. Jabril Peppers deep to receive. So here are the Giants ready to start their initial drive of the game. They're led onto the field by the former third-round pick back in 2012, and that's the quarterback, Nick Foles. Love his build, love his arm. Had a Pro Bowl season with the Philadelphia Eagles, looking to scale those heights once again. Start on the ground with Goldman, and he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. All right, let's get a peek at these starters here in the Golden Child. Golden Tate. Love his versatility because you can use him anywhere in your offense, and he's an excellent kick returner. Loves to play the game, plays with passion. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Watch the Foles. That's caught by his tight end, Evan Ingram. It's a big time play there for the G Man. 47 yards. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays? Let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Now back to throw. Almost able to intercept it. That's one he would have liked to have held on to on this first drive. Instead, second down. And a look at the defense for the Cowboys. Sean Lee is a linebacker with an exciting mix of tackling ability and coverage skills.
Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up, second and 10. Second and 10. Blitz coming and down he goes. Sean Lee, the longtime vet, getting in and getting to the QB. Well, nothing takes a start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. And on third down, the Cowboys bring in an extra defensive back. They're going to look to throw. And he's going to go down again. Tyrone Crawford, he's the one to get him this time. And back-to-back -back sacks brings up fourth down. Charles, a little bit of feast or famine on this drive. They moved the ball okay, but they've been sacked twice now. And they've got to figure out how to plug that leak a little bit, right? Keep them away from the quarterback because when he's not being hit, as you mentioned, they're moving the ball well. Now Riley Dixon on, he did his collegiate kicking upstate at Syracuse. Back deep is Tavon Austin. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 16. Now a throw right side taken in here to start this drive. 11 yards and a Cowboy first down. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together and he catches it and goes over the sideline. They'll run on first down. It's Elliott. He'll have a first down past the 40. And he'll finally be taken down just shy of midfield. That good for 22 and a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They keep on the ground with Elliott. And this time they were ready for him as he's taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Now Elliott. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. A second down play results in a loss of two yards. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And he's able to hook up with Michael Gallup. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 28. 
fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you're throwing so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now, first and 10, as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Prescott's throw going to be caught by Gallup, and down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Give him 18 on that one, and it's a Dallas first down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. That is caught. It's Cooper for the Cowboy touchdown. Amari Cooper there to make the grab as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. That's an old-fashioned death march there, partner. Took them a lot of plays, but hey, they did the job. And the defense always preaches getting off the field, making a play, and turning it back over to their own offense. Unable to do so. A long, sustained drive by the offense. Extra point splits the uprights, and it's now a 7-0 game. After one, 7-0 on EA Sports. to kick this one away and off it goes fairly short kick taken at the 14 here and good starting field position he'll get this one all the way up to about the 35 yard line the New York set to take the field they'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. CD, with that incompletion, let's talk AFC playoff picture. I think you and I agree that if you put together any sort of power rankings, we'd put Baltimore number one, certainly in the AFC. But you look ahead to the playoffs getting started on January 4th. Who do you see as their main competitor for that Lamar Hunt trophy? Well, tradition and us not wanting to be wrong dictates that we say New England next, and rightly so because of the number of Lombardi trophies they've won, how they've always played at this time of year. But the bottom line to me is the prime contenders right now for Baltimore, Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes has gotten together and the defense is playing better. And Buffalo really showed me something when they beat Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh on a Sunday night in Week 15. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. 
Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well Let's into go. the end zone for a touchback. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They run the counter. Elliott. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. Got his man there complete to Gallup. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 13 yards and a first down, Cowboys. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Call that a very strong gain of 24. The beauty of route running is it doesn't matter what position, everyone's doing the same thing. In this case, tight end, selling the vertical route. Get the defensive back on his heels, break off for the corner. And with good timing, you get a completion as we just saw there. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 43. They run the counter, Elliott, and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play, and that'll make this a second and 13. That was shades of Tennessee volunteer football back in the 80s with Charles Davis coming up from the secondary to make the tackle for a loss. You mean my teammates doing that, right? <laughs> because they would tell you, my coaches say, where's that tape? I want to see that. But how about the complete package there? Not just playing the pass, but being a willing tackler and making a really nice play. Now on second and 13, Prescott. It's caught, Cooper. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. It's funny when I go back to our pregame meeting with Amari Cooper, and we mention, eh, what if they play man coverage against you? He almost seemed offended by it, didn't he? I'll beat it. That's basically what he <laughs> said, right? I mean, the best receivers we've ever talked to and covered, when you talk about covering them with one guy, they think that's a personal affront. If they feel like if they can't just beat one defender, then they're not very good. Prescott on third and two. Connects here with a tight end, Blake Jarwin. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. First target, first catch, and a first down. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. Prescott now, nearly perfect. Nine of 10 in this first half. It's first and 10. Throwing, Prescott. He's got the connection to Cooper. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, seven nothing ball game. A 
reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. And this is caught by Winton, the tight end. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Third and short yardage, Prescott, complete to Jason Witten. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So on fourth down, Jason Garrett sends in his field goal unit. From the right hash, it's a 38-yard attempt. And his kick here is good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal. And for the offense, 10-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. It's a short kick, taken near the 18. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. And New York set to take the field. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. You better be afraid of me. Now Foles. Finding his target, it's Cody Latimer. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. It's a gain of 11 and a giant first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Lawrence with a sack. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. <laughs> to try again after the sack. Falls. He gets it complete to Latimer. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. The Giants going to burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. the catch on second down but it didn't help at all and now they're looking at third down here back to throw he's got his man this is Tate that one goes for 24 yards
Aldrich Rosas now to try the Giants' field goal. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. And the kick by Rosas is good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10-3. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. Field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. Time here for likely a couple plays if they want it, but with the field position what it is, maybe better suited to just sit on this one? I'm with you totally. I would sit on it and get into the locker room and, and start over. But if they do decide to try and make a play, we know what the basics are. You run draw, you run screen. I would maybe run a little swing pass and try and get my lineman out in space and see if they can chop a hole into the secondary and see if he can run a little bit. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This one taken from the seven. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here's Nick Foles as he heads back out to work. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Uh, he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. Go, go, go. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. They'll run again here with Goldman. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. But you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. He'll look to throw. They'll complete this to Ingram, his tight end. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 17 yards and a giant first down. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one. And that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. throw now on first down looking left sideline but it's incomplete 
With that incompletion, you know, Charles, one of the big storylines in the final few weeks of the season lies in the AFC South. Tennessee and Houston battling back and forth. Houston won round one, week 15, a victory in Nashville. But which of those two teams do you think has the potential to go deeper in the playoffs? Well, Tennessee just lost at home to Houston, and now we'll have to go on the road to play them again in week 17. So I would say, on the surface, you would think Houston. They have the quarterback as well in Deshaun Watson that scares everyone. But I'm picking Tennessee as a team that could go deeper because of their defense. That's really a top five defense on any given Sunday. Their ability to rush the passer, their ability to play the ball in the air. I like that Tennessee team. I think Ryan Tannehill, the switch to him at quarterback, has really energized that club. That's complete to Goldman. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. A pickup of five that time and a first down. Now that's absolutely frustrating for a defender. Had a chance to get him on the ground before he got to the sideline, but what great vision and understanding where he is on the field as he headed for the marker and picked up the first down. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. Gallman will run it. Demarcus Lawrence in on the tackle. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Here's second and nine. Just a yard on that last run. This is Gallman. And he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Foles. And Latimer's got it. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there were very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. Easy, easy. Check, check Mike 54. Mike 54. Six man. Check curls, check curls, check curls. Here you go. Here's Gallman. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. And he'll give it here to his running back. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. Five yards on first down, but now just a one-yard pickup there on second. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Looking to throw. They're going to Gallman here on the screen. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. He lost two, and it brings up four. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. Made his first, this now from 42 yards out. And Rosas puts this one through. And that'll bring him back within four. So a decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, <laughs> right? Hey, got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory.
After the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. This will be fielded at the 8. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Cowboys offense now, they head out for their first possession of the second half. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. So Prescott of the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 27. They'll try and get the running game going with Elliott. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down, get to the fourth quarter, try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. Throwing on second and three. Prescott, that one complete. Elliott. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Three quarters in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now here in East Rutherford. It's the Cowboys with the football. They'll be looking to tack onto their lead as we get set for the fourth. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. This is Elliott. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. It, yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Yeah. Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Prescott from the gun on third. Completes it to Jason Witten. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. Made his first, this now from 42 yards out. I don't think this will even, nope, it doesn't even get there. Well short, and this score will stay right where it is. Now this was still going to be a one-score game either way, but still, that's a potentially harmful miss here in the fourth. It certainly is, because if you consider that now if they give up a touchdown, they give up the lead. So he might be getting the side eye by the defenders coming out on the field now as he goes back to the bench after that miss. And New York set to take the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Finds his tight end, Ingram. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. 
They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way. Work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Now a handoff here to his running back, and he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Four yards to pick up, first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. They'll look to throw here on first down. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. That'll be a pickup of four as they work with his four-point fourth-quarter lead. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Looking to throw again on second down. Foles looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Seven yards there and a first down. It is hard in zone coverage to stop a curl route because when they see it, they just try and find the open spot and sit down. Yeah, we always talk about finding the soft spot in the zone. What's the key to doing that? How do you do it? You have to read what the coverage is. Is it too deep? Is it three deep? Because then you know where the linebackers are going to drop, what spots on the field they naturally get to, and you find that open space, and then you're in sync with your quarterback. He should be reading the exact same thing, and they put the ball right on you. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. <laughs> to throw again on second down. Foles. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. <laughs> I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work on a little bit more. He completes it to Tate. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Give him 18 there, and the Giants have a first down. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. A delayed give to Goldman. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. Foles, clock moving, trying to hurry everybody up to the line of scrimmage. Back to throw. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Evan Ingram was the intended target, but now it'll be third down. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. He'll look to throw. That's going to be caught. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with it an eyelash. Dropped it to one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. First down now, but the clock continues to move. 
He's back to throw. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off by Jeff Heath. And nothing there on the return. They've got the football, but they'll have to start this drive at their own four-yard line. Well, I don't think we'll have to look very hard to find our play of the game. That was an absolutely monstrous big play right there. Backs to the wall. The offense has it in the red zone. Driving for the winning score. And he says, not on my watch. And that is one happy bunch on the sidelines. Dak and the Cowboy offense heading back onto the field. So, Charles, there are the numbers. What's happened here? Defensive adjustments that's caused him to sort of fall off a bit? I think so. That has to happen. You've got to make some changes because in the first half, they were pretty effective. But the second part is sometimes when you're doing really well, you get off your game a little bit. You get off the gas a little. You're like, okay, we've got this thing. And that's not necessarily the case. Maybe right now, someone just needs to tell a joke in the huddle, loosen things up, and get their big guy going again. A first down carry by Elliott. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. An ideal down and distance to try to finish this thing off. Second and inches. Throwing here, Prescott. He finds his target, it's Schultz. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in the fourth. Prescott now. Just one misfire so far after that last completion. 15 of 16. It's first down. The Cowboys on their way to victory as they take a knee. The Giants going to burn their third and final timeout as the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. The Cowboys on their way to victory as they take a knee. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Prescott, he goes down to a knee, and that should just about do it. Well, Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium, that certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football, low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? You I loved did. the defense. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old.